Hi, it's Gary at Good Enough Tech Reviews, the channel that asks, is it good enough and aims to give you information to make more informed purchasing decisions on your technology. I've been using the G Wolves HSK for about three weeks now as my gaming and productivity driver, and I'm ready to go in depth to ask the question, is it good enough? So for background, there were about 120 sample units of this mouse sent out in October 2020 with a general release when I bought mine in June 2021. Uh, as far as I'm aware, this was only available through X-Ray Pad. Um, you should see that on the screen now with global FedEx shipping and was $79, uh, about $100 delivered to the UK, but obviously that will vary. It arrived in three days, around 50 units were released. I didn't want to miss out on the initial drop, so despite $30 shipping, I, I made the bite. Um, this will be reviewed as an 80 US dollar product because that's what the sale price is. Shipping will vary based on where you are. Um, in terms of notes, I've made a few preference mods to this mouse, which I'll run through as we get to them and explain why I did it, how they've improved or changed the experience. What I want to do is, is make sure that you're informed when I've made a change if you need to make the change yourself or if it's something that the stock configuration will work just fine. So the unboxing experience wasn't the usual G World standard. There was the tin, uh, so that's always a, a plus. Um, there was no spare skates, paracord or switches, uh, although G Wolves have confirmed that future batches should have spare skates at least. There was a color variant of the scroll wheel included. Uh, Get that into focus, which is the, I guess we're going to call it Final Mouse Ultralight Phantom Blue. Um, I guess for me personally, if they'd have had a white variant to go with this mouse, I think the white scroll wheel would have been much more welcome. It's nice, obviously, to have something for nothing, so not complaining there, but in the future, potentially maybe a, a white, um, unless they're going to include a, a blue paracord uh, to go with it, to mix that mouse up and make it look more like the Phantom colorway. The skate quality was surprisingly good. Uh, they were glided well on cloth, hybrid, glass pads, very little scratch, rounded edges. A uh, sensor ring also has a skate, which was nice to see, limiting DPI deviation, should I say. Uh, there were no spare skates uh, provided, as I mentioned, so when I opened the mouse, I did have to replace them with aftermarket skates. Uh, at the moment, only core pads are available. However, I managed to get hyperglides for this uh, mouse. As you can see, the skates are the same size as the bottom two skates from the Model O and Model Mo Minus. So if you pick up the hyperglides for the Model O Minus or Model O, you can use both sets to get one set for your HSK. Um, I wanted them because I like the speed of a hyperglide. Cleaning brush was included. Personally, I like keeping this for the keyboard, desk accessories, mouse mat, etc. But they can reduce the price and stop including these. I think at the moment, people that are frequent GWALS customers have kind of enough of them. Uh, build quality was the biggest surprise for this mouse. Uh, build quality was exceptional. No flex, no creak, even under significant stress. Uh, there's nothing whatsoever there. Uh, stock cable was a GWALS black paracord cable. Again, if you've had any G Wolves mice, you know what it is. Um, personally, again, it, I don't have an issue with this cable on the Hearty or the Skull, but with a mouse this small and light, I think a paracord really does elevate the overall proposition. It, it really does make the mouse easier to use. So for me, I wanted to swap it out straight away. Got a silver grey paracord from Paracable Mods. Super flexible. Uh, even with this cord, it still moves the mouse. So the, the stock one was was almost unusable for me. The scroll wheel is great, has really defined steps in it. Uh, no issues there whatsoever. I can actuate it absolutely fine. The buttons have minimal post and pre-travel and zero side play, even when force tested. Uh, extremely lightweight, 34 and a half grams without the cable. Put it on a scale now, hopefully you can see that on screen. Sensor is a Pixar 3389 with DPI potential up to 16,000, although the top step is 5,600, I believe. Uh, it's a 3389, so Raiden users, yes, it will spin out uh, on any LOD setting. I've tested myself. Immediate note, the DPI steps on this printed guide that come with the mouse are incorrect. Uh, I'm going to show up on screen now what the printed steps are on this um, guide and what they actually are from testing G Wolves are aware of this um, and have said that obviously it's an issue in batch one. Not sure if future batches or if indeed a firmware update will correct that, uh, but at the time of review, 
if you're playing on 1200, 1600 or the 2000 setting, uh, be mindful that the, the settings that they put on the instructions are not correct. So there's been a lot of discussion uh, about this shape for fingertip, if it does the job, um, if it's a good shape, it's a comfortable shape. I can only speak for myself um, as a fingertip player with a 20 centimeter by 9.5 centimeter hands. Uh, this section is gonna be very, very opinionated and subjective. Uh, I can only talk from my experience with it, so your mileage may vary. Uh, I've used probably 50 or so mice playing PC games for most of my life. Still currently own about 35 at the moment for comparative purposes. This is by far and away the most comfortable mouse I've ever used as a fingertip player. The shape feels like an extension of my fingers. Um, I don't know if you can see the grip here, but it is very, very comfortable. Um, kind of feels almost like holding an ergonomic pencil, if that makes sense. Gives me a lot of precision to move around, to find micro adjustments, to hit the targets. Um, the comfort grooves, on the clicks are subtle, but they're there. Um, kind of feels a bit like the MZ1, which has sort of grooves for days. Uh, this one takes inspiration from that mouse, um, but obviously a little bit more subtle. What I like about those comfort grooves is that you can have a lot of side movement without needing to hold the mouse down hard, make a sort of pincer grip there, which is exceptional as a fingertip player. Uh, there's a lot of critiques about the hump online um, I think that the hump will only really be an issue to you if your hands are, or fingers length, should I say, is too small to necessarily hold the mouse in a, in a fingertip shape. Uh, the sensor position, however, is quite rear bias. Um, if I just compare that to something like the Orochi, which has a particularly forward position sensor, um, you can see that the, that the sensor is really, really rear biased, which reduces the amount of micro adjustment radius. Uh, that you have uh, as opposed to the, the Orochi. I'd like to see that corrected in future iterations. I actually had to compensate and move my grip further back from the mouse. I couldn't hold it as far forward as, as I wanted to. So these are probably some of the most unique uh, and interesting clicks that, that I've ever encountered, um, or at least buttons. They are the same click tensioning regardless of where you click it anywhere on the button the same sound the same feel the same tensioning which is fantastic because it opens up a whole range of grip options you, you can move up and down this mouse comfortably without impacting the feel of the mouse they are stock omron 20m switches um, but i'm not a switch elitist i think any switch implementation can be absolutely viable depending on binning pairing and tensioning. Um, the stock Omrons that I had were pretty good, actually. I can't say that they were bad. Uh, if I wasn't an experienced modder, I probably would have stuck with them. Uh, my personal preference was to have something a little bit uh, lighter, shall we say, a little bit easier to click on a mouse this light. So I swapped them out for TTC Gold uh, 80 million V2s. You should see a picture of the, the board on there. You can pick these up from AliExpress vendors, um, probably two to three dollars a pair. I think X-Ray Pad also might be shipping these out at the moment as well. Um, again, not very hard to find. Very light switch uh, if you, you've been the correct pair. I personally really like them. Uh, after a few weeks use, the scroll wheel feels like a, a stiffer Orochi V2. Uh, using the Orochi a lot as a comparison, just because I, I have it here uh, to hand and it's another small mouse that a lot of people will be familiar with. Probably a slightly stiffer rotation because it's got a smaller radius on the wheel so it's obviously got less less leverage uh, clicks feel really really good um, as i said it's largely redundant to do a, a click test here i'm going to put one in um, just because people <laughs> like to have them So the next section looks at side buttons, um, or lack thereof, they're, they're not there. Uh, for gaming, I thought this would be a bigger issue. The, the caveat here is that I mainly play casual boomer games, a um, bit of Overwatch here and there, so side buttons aren't really required. Uh, I did bound the scroll wheel click to melee, uh, and I found that my gaming was unimpacted once I 
just got used to rotating off to the side um, to just click for melee. Uh, I imagine if you play something like Fortnite or a game where side buttons are mandatory, then this mouse is is you know, non-starter. You don't even consider buying it. Um, for productivity, uh, which granted, I think I'm probably the only person who's using this uh, for office tasks. No back button was a factor at first for browsing, but I found binding backspace uh, on my browser was probably the, the easiest fix for that. Didn't really find that it impacted me. And for me, the comfort of having a, a mouse this light um, that fit around my hands far outweighed the usage of a, a side button. So for me, productivity, not a problem at all on this mouse. So weight, outside of shape, the biggest other selling point on this mouse is probably the weight. Uh, I've got some calibrated scales here. Um, it's about 34 and a half grams, as I said, from this image without the cable. I'm just gonna drop it on now. Um, you can see that it's about 36, 36 and a half grams there, but take my word for it, about 36 grams um, there with the paracord. And it's worth really stopping to consider how light that actually is. No other production mouse is close to this. I think the nearest here are 10 grams off or so, being the, the Harty S Ace, the Cox CM600 or Team Wolf Lurker, uh, 48, 45 grams, I think. Um, I say production here, and I guess the reason, if you're looking for lightweight mice, if, if that's your primary purchasing decision, is a lightweight mice, mouse, then the, the HSK obviously delivers that in, in spades at a reasonable price. I want to address the two elephants in the room, that being the Starlight 12 um, and the uh, Zaunkunisch M2K. Apologies to German viewers, I've probably butchered that. I'll be referring to it as the M2K for the rest of the review. Um, Final Mouse delivers a wireless 44 gram experience on the Starlight 12. You know, fantastic mouse, uh, availability remains scarce. It is still objectively 10 grams heavier. Granted, side buttons wireless, but on a pound for pound basis, lightweight, it's it's not close to the HSK. Um, also talk about the irony of, of HSK availability whilst this mouse is out of stock everywhere. Um, G Wolves have shared that 20,000 units apparently are in production for general release in July, August 2021. So hopefully by the time this review is watched, it's something that is retail and available. I think at $80, if this is widely available, it is a super good purchase for fingertip. Um, Finally, the M2K. Now, I don't own and haven't used the M2K, so I can't comment on whether or not it's better. Uh, honestly, I imagine it probably is better <laughs> than, than this product compared in a vacuum, but I don't think it's a fair comparison. This mouse is $80. The M2K is about $360 plus local customs charges that you might face. So for four times the price, is it four times better than this mouse? question I, I don't know i'd have to use it to answer that but i think for most general people 80 dollars is uh, still a lot to ask for a mouse but at least a reasonable ask for a mouse 360 dollars is is firmly in the enthusiast territory i think if you're looking to spend 360 dollars on a mouse you're not watching this review you've, you've probably already bought it um it's the you know the hsk is the lightest production mouse that isn't a handmade carbon fiber uh, product For performance, uh, I'm not professional or even a particularly highly skilled gamer, so I won't spend a huge amount of time on this section. There are far more informed and skilled reviewers who can critique or comment on the impact um, on their game that, that this mouse has. Uh, but as your average consumer who enjoys some FPS in their spare time, my aim's never been better than, than with this mouse. Um, personal preference, again, heavily caveating this comment. I've set new Aim Labs personal bests. Uh, been hitting some some great shots with consistency not seen on other mice. Uh, I can't say whether this is the mouse confidence or practice um, using the, the mouse a lot because I felt that this mouse has made me want to play more. Um, I think that's been said by other reviewers. It's a, it's a great feeling to have. Um, no issues on any of my artisan pads. Um, I've used it on all of them outside of the aforementioned Raiden, which spins out on the 3389. Does it on the uh, MZ1 as well. This isn't a HSK issue. Any mouse with a 3389, I have had spin out issues on the Raiden. Um, but on hard pads, the mouse is a little bit more twitchy. Something like a Skypad, Shidenkai, Glorious Air. Still very controllable. 
Um, but for this sort of mouse, I'd recommend maybe something with a bit more control. I'm using it on a Hien X Soft at the moment. I think Hayate Otsu or Zero would also be good choices for this particular mouse. As with all my reviews, I'd like to conclude by answering the question, is the HSK good enough for the price asked and try to give you a list of pros and cons so you can make your own mind up. Now, something I'm keen to do on this channel is never give you a recommendation or suggest that you should buy a particular product. Rather, I want to give you a comprehensive assessment so you can make a more informed purchasing decision yourself. In terms of pros, unique shape um, from an in-production mouse for fingertip grip players. I don't think there's anything else like this out on the market. Uh, outside of the M2K, as I said, not a production mouse. The MZ1 is similar, um, kind of like slightly slimmer, slightly larger, longer mouse, but not the same thing. Um, in terms of the clicks, great click feel, consistent feeling as well around the mouse. I've mentioned that premium build, um, which people are going to meme G Wolves for, but honestly, legitimately impressed i think they've done a lot of work around community engagement a lot of work about um improving the the build quality you've seen a lot of revisions with better switches um i say better sorry with more uh, i guess enthusiast switches used in their recent mice things like the red phantom with kl 8.0s um really seen g wolves up their their game and this is evidence of that uh, good value as well uh, 80 dollars is a lot for a mouse when you can get wireless uh, Orochi V2 for less than that um, but I think it's an enthusiast product it's a niche product the MZ1 which I've used a few times in this review as an example $80 as well uh, it's an enthusiast product a wired mouse fingertip mouse designed for people who are going to find it comfortable and find it improves their aim exactly what the HSK is targeted at too. Priced up against the uh, MZ1, I think it's very fair to ask. Um, supposedly as well, Final Pro, this is going to be widely available over the coming month. So it's not something that you have to uh, try to fight the bots for in uh, in drops uh, or pay you know, ludicrous amounts for to try to get handmade uh, by Zaunkunish. Areas for improvement, the DPI steps that are printed on the guide absolutely have to be corrected if not already they either need to correct it on firmware or correct it on the manual you can't have something that's that's incorrect out there I think it's going to lead to a lot of people disappointed with the mouse if it impacts the dpi step that they use uh, additional skates in the box maybe g wolves grips as well g wolves do some pretty fantastic grips on the hearty be nice to see them added to the hsk uh, i know that g wolves have said they're putting the additional skates in so if they do that this will no longer be a con. The stock paracord needs work um, specifically for the HSK. I think it's fine on other mice, but for the HSK, I think it's more of an issue than it is on the Hearty just because of the weight. Sensor position absolutely is a uh, area for improvement in my opinion. Um, I don't know if there are people that prefer a rear bias sensor. I'm sure that there are. Uh, again, maybe subjective, but for me, a forward bias sensor like something in the Orochi or at least um, in the center of the mouse as we can see in some of the other products that we've got here I think would be uh, a preference I think that would impact my aim less uh, and force me to to move further you know force me not to move as far back down the mouse as I've had to um, and lastly side buttons I think that would expand the potential audience it's a bit harsh for me to call it a con um, when the mouse was was never intended to have side buttons uh, i think if the hsk plus which is in plan is released uh, by g wolves with the side buttons i think that they'll really expand the potential audience for this mouse okay so hopefully now you can answer the question is the g wolves hsk good enough uh, for me personally i really like the product but ultimately it's up to you to make your own purchasing decision here is it something you want to go ahead with? Leave a comment, leave feedback. This has been my first ever full length product deep dive and review. I really want to know how to make them better, how to make them more engaging, uh, how to make the best sort of content that, that you guys want. Um, I enjoyed it and, and hopefully some of you did too. Uh, this has been Gary at Good Enough Reviews. And until next time, see you.